Hi guys, I hope you're doing well and um, enjoying yourself in this um, bad period. Um, yes, we are all not enjoying it, but we're just trying to keep body and soul together. So I really hope that you would um, also try as much as you can to make the best of the season. It's not the best anyway for anybody, but um, I'm sure that by the time we are going to get used to this, um, I want to use this opportunity to um, congratulate the many of you who were able to participate in the various assignments and activities. Um, as you can see, we shifted from uh, Socrative to Sakai because of your behavior. Mm -hmm. That's why me, I don't want to give my lecture notes to you. You people are so interesting. So. <laughs> Um, apparently, what happened was that on Socrative, I realized that a good number of you uh, did about, some did as many as five entries. Can you imagine? And some of them were so fast that, you know, let's say the person is called, for instance, Kweku Buama, then he would enter with the index number first, and then, let's say, 10165728, Buama. And then when he gets another wrong, he'll go back and do uh, Buama, 1018, da, 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 da. Then it's as if it's a new entry. Come on, I'm too too fast for this. So we identified all of those and uh, we felt that it was not too good because the security sessions on uh, security was not that much helping. That was why we jumped to Sakai. On Sakai, about 1,145 of you are registered. Yes, you are many. <laughs> you think you are few. You are many. 1,145. Um, now, it was interesting that we received 514 entries with 15 people who were in progress and they never finished before the deadline. So, unfortunately, that was what we got. And so, we're going to work with it. And I hear a good number of you are responding to the effect that you could not assess the Sakai um, online activity. Some of you were not registered and all of that. Yes, um, we can help it. I mentioned that and you had a whole day from 6 a.m. Okay, I uploaded that and I shifted the time. So from 7 a.m., even though some of you even answered before that time, from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., so if you had tried early enough and you saw that you were not registered, you would certainly have tackled the um, teaching assistants who will quickly get back to you and then we will sort it out. But that didn't come. There were, I got a few responses, but I didn't get the index numbers early enough. So I couldn't help it. So I think that um, let's try and help each other. I'm available and I'm on point to make sure that things work out but if you don't help it, it gets difficult and that is why i think that you should um, put yourself up i give you a full length to go so that it will be flexed by no of internet connectivity that's why i leave the whole day from 7 a.m to 10 p.m come on you can't tell me you had uh what you call internet problems all through so please, today, after the lecture, there will be assignment from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Sakai. If you have any challenge, you have any problem, it is your duty to alert the teaching assistant so that when they revert to me, I quickly include you and then make sure that you have access. And so please, those of you who are having, saying they are not registered, you can't find the calls on, interact with the uh, what they call teaching assistants give them your id and then we'll put things through so that you can respond unfortunately i'm taking count of all these and so if you don't answer them and it's interesting especially in so creative some of you you just go in you don't answer anything you just enter you leave it some of you you answer question one and two and then you leave it interestingly in sakai you can't do that and so um i think sakai is good for you Looking at your behavior, and is it in some way in cheating? So that is how we have come. And so, please, after here, we'll go on Sakai 
and then you answer questions. You answer questions. You may choose to, you may choose not to. It's, uh, I have done my bit and I think I've been very flexible, very, very flexible. Again, you must be aware that we have not taken our IA and that must be done. That is a whooping uh, mighty marks that if you choose to let it go, fine. The plan so far is that we're going to take the IA on the 30th of April on Sakai. On the 30th of April on Sakai, I'll give you a few details on it next week. And so what it means is that this week I'm going to teach you do assignment on Sakai. Next week I will teach again you do assignment on Sakai. The following week, which is 30th, I will not upload anything on YouTube. It will be your responsibility to go to Sakai and do the I over there. So that following week, I won't put up a new lecture. So on the 30th, you won't have a lecture. You would just have to go to Sakai and answer the question. I'll give you details with regard to how many questions, uh, the due date for the time, and certainly it's going to be enough time for every one of you, if only you are serious, to answer them. So uh, these are a few comments I would want to give you before the lecture starts. Brace yourself up and I see a good number of you are enjoying the lecture from there. Well, that's the little I can do to make your troubles less difficult. And so let's get ready and let's um, start. Remember that you have to try as much as possible to subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can get the alert of the lecture. You subscribe and then you share a comment. I like the interaction that is going on down there. I've been following it as you can see and uh, it's interesting. So guys, let's get rolling. Let's get ourselves ready. Keep your eyes opened and then let's flow through. We have more than a thousand students, but we have not had more than uh, two, more than a thousand five hundred people responding or watching the videos. Well, if you don't watch it, it, it's not going to be a problem for me. And so I think that let's encourage one another. Let's help each other. And then let's see how things go. So if you are ready, let's roll. And if you have any questions, don't forget to go for tutorials. Tutorials are very important. That is where the TAs interact with you on the subject. And so please uh, make it a point to interact on their tutorials and then we'll see. So sure. Um, for our deliberations today, we're going to consider practices of Christianity. We have done a lot about the history of Christianity. We have dealt with a lot of aspects about what goes on in Christianity. But for today, our focus is going to be on the practices, what Christians do, what festivals they participate in, and then um, we'll get to appreciate what surrounds Christianity. So let's get rolling. Sure. So we're saying that the Christian calendar is filled with a number of fest feasts and holy days. The Christians have a lot of feast days and a lot of holidays, and sometimes you don't really understand why. Attitudes of the different branches of Christianity to Christian calendar are not the same. Yes, because we have just seen that there are various Christian expressions. We have the Roman Catholics, you have the Orthodox Church, you have the mainline churches, you have the Protestants, you have the P Pentecostals, you have the New Prophetic. You even have, uh, you have my friend, Obini. Hey, <laughs> it's interesting. Sure. And so not all of them follow many of these practices, but generally we are going to look at the practices that cut across and look at how they practice, they practice it across board. The Roman Catholics and the... Orthodox Christians regard the various feasts and festivals with more seriousness than the Protestants. Yeah, that's true. So it's like you have a continuum. You see, uh, the Roman Catholics are very serious with the festivals and the feasts. The, the Roman Catholics and the Orthodox churches. But the Protestants are quite relaxed with many of these feasts. And so when you go to the Roman Catholic church, there are a lot of feast days. There are a lot of them. There are a lot. And for us as Catholics, we celebrate all of them. We do, we do masses in their honor. Or many of the church fathers have feast days that we remember them. But then in the 
Protestant churches, very few. But the worst of <laughs> are my people, the Pentecostals. Cry, they don't even have time for many of these. Oh, so, so that's what they do. And then um, the other traditions. Baptists and Pentecostals observe only Christmas and Easter. They mostly ignore all the other holidays, just as I've mentioned. Now, the two most important festivals of Christianity are Christmas and Easter. Both are set in a long period of elaborate observances. So, one of the, I mean, two festivals cut across all the Christian expressions. And here we have the Christmas and Easter. Christmas marks the birth of Christ and Easter marks the death of Christ. And there you see the Pentecostals, the Protestants, and the Roman Catholics and Orthodox churches participating in all of this. And there are elaborate preparations and activities that go on during these festivals. Christmas is preceded by Advent, which starts in November. And when uh, especially the Roman Catholics and the sometime the Protestants talk about Advent. It is four Sundays proud to Christmas and it ends on Christmas Eve. And so four Sundays before they call the Advent season where they begin to prepare and do all kinds of things. For the Eastern Orthodox Church, Advent begins from November 15th and lasts for 40 days, known as Nativity Feast. Known as Nativity Feast. Spiritual preparations such as prayer, fasting, Repentance in anticipation of the joy of the Lord comes in during this period. Not a, a time only, not a time only to remember Jesus' first coming as a baby, but his presence through the Holy Spirit in anticipation of his final coming is all celebrated during these festivals. Now, Easter, on the other hand, is preceded by Lent, a 40-day period of fasting and prayer. My God, ain't he? One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> 40 days. Now you are going to we need it. So, you, sure? so you, you don't eat at all? Hey. Uh, hey. <laughs> this is not my portion. No. And so the Christians say they fast for 40 days and uh, usually... Uh, the weekends are not included, um, and Easter Sunday is also not included. And it's usually preceded by the Passion Week. And the Passion Week marks the suffering and death of Jesus Christ on the cross. So the last week of Jesus on earth is what these people call the Passion Week. And they, they do all kinds of things during that period. Now, so let's begin with some of the festivals. And uh, here we are starting with Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday. You know, the Christians do that 40 day fast. And when they do the 40 day fast, what really happens is that they fast throughout, and in some churches, they go to church and all of that. But before they start the Lent thing period, there is the Ash Wednesday service, which is the Wednesday that precedes the fast. So on that Wednesday, when they meet, they usually do, as you can see in the picture, a mark of the cross on their foreheads with ash and this ash is usually the um palm sunday when it's said that jesus did a triumphant entry that palm sunday the palm branches that they use they keep it for a year and so like this year what they use they are going to keep it till next year ash wednesday and then they will burn it into ashes and apply it on their foreheads as a sign to remind remind them that they are ashes. They are nothing. They will be a look at this coronavirus, the way it has humbled human beings. Uh -huh. So they just come to that point. And so the priest will do that. As you can see in the picture, the priest will mark their foreheads with this ashes. And we say that ashes are imposed on the foreheads of Roman Catholics, Anglicans, and other traditional Christians as a sign of their repentance. It ends on Holy Saturday, the Saturday before Easter Sunday. So uh, that is just what happens with Ash Wednesday. Now, again, other feasts include Epiphany and Pentecost. Epiphany marks the manifestation of the divinity of Christ and remembers the wise men from the East who 
visited the infant Jesus. So Epiphany actually means appearance when Christ was announced. And so uh, Christians celebrate that period, especially with the Catholics and um, the Orthodox Church and sometimes the Anglican Church, but many of the other churches, they are no Christians enough, you see. <laughs> so they don't celebrate Epiphany. So the Epiphany is when God was revealed, like the wise men on the East when the, they were manning their, shepherd, their sheep and then um, they got the sign. It is normally the last day of the Christmas season. And on that day, Christmas decorations are removed. Yeah. And so that is the epiphany uh, issue. Just about that. Now, Pentecost um, is very important for the Christians for various reasons. Uh, when I talk about Pentecost, I'm not talking about Church of Pentecost. I'm talking about the event in Acts chapter 2. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know my So, <laughs> You would my Right. So Pentecost marks the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the disciples of Jesus in the uh, upper room. And on that day we are told that there were 120 disciples of Jesus, including the mother of Jesus, Mary. And so we can tell from there that the disciples of Jesus were apparently more than the 12 that we are told but of course there are occasions where jesus sent out 120 the occasions he sent out 80 i think yeah of the disciples and all of that it marks the founding of the church on that day now pentecost like i've said is very important for christians and so let me hint a little bit on the importance of pentecost for the Christians. That is why they celebrate this day with uh, a lot of pant and pageantry. And I have four significance or four importance of Pentecost to Christianity. Number one, it marked the birth of the church. You see, it is said that when before Jesus ascended into heaven, he told the disciples that the something, something Holy Spirit will come upon them. And as you saw in the previous picture, uh, the in Acts chapter two, it is said that tongues of fire settled on them. Now, and she would tell me, Anna, okay, you let's leave it like that. <laughs> tongues of fire is said to have settled on their head, and they started speaking in some kind of language. They did those things that they have been doing. Hira baba, hira baba, hira baba, hira baba, hira baba. Uh huh. They did all of that. <laughs> sure. So Pentecost marked the birth of the church because, um. From there, Jesus told them that they should wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. Then they will be his witness. And so, in essence, it is believed that Holy Spirit marks, or the Pentecost, marks the birth of the church. Number two, the day of Pentecost is very significant to the Christians because it marks the fulfillment of the promise of God. God, Jesus promised uh, the disciples that he was going and that he was not going to leave them orphans, but that he will send the Holy Spirit on the disciples. And it is said that that Holy Spirit ascended on the disciples on that day. Okay. And so what he said was fulfilled. Now, a major uh, significance of the Holy Spirit or the Pentecost was the fact that the experience emboldened the disciples and here logically we want to use uh, peter because he was the man who even a little get scared him and he said yes <laughs> so he wanted to save himself and so he denied jesus twice and when the court crew he uh, ran away for the disappointment he has caused himself in Jesus. And so, it, but then it is said that on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit came upon them, Peter, this coward who was afraid of a slave girl, could speak before the Sahindrin, he could speak before the elders and declare Jesus. Even though they were told not to talk about Jesus, Peter spoke, and that day 3,000 gave their life to Christ. And you saw other expressions of boldness when sometimes they were arrested and brought before the Sanhedrin and all kinds of things the disciples stood they did not defray their faith in God and uh, they did what they are supposed to do so you saw that bold that courage with which they spoke and uh, we can attribute that to the 
Pentecost experience. And finally, it brought a transformation of the disciples to become apostles. So then they became apostles and they were endued with power to do a lot of things for their Christian faith. So sure. now again, um, the other festive occasion for Christians is a Sunday. Christians worship on Sunday, or let me say many Christian denominations worship on Sunday. And uh, it's a feast day. It's one of the reasons why during Lent, Christians do not fast on Sundays. And uh, we'll get the explanation later, don't worry. Now, according to one of the church fathers called Justin Mata, Justin Mata, Sunday was the day on which Christians worshipped together. Why? Because the name was derived from day of the sun. So you get a lot of people trying to say that eh, Christians should have worshipped on uh, Saturday or on any other day, but that the Sunday was a day where the, um, as it were, the Romans worshipped the sun god. And so Christians worshipped the sun god. That is not true. That is not the case for several other reasons which we are going to see. Of course, the Romans or the pagans at the time worshipped the sun goddess on that day. But then the Christians chose that day for sacred reasons. Christians also believe that Sunday was the day Christ rose from the dead. So that is a significant day for the Christians. And so the Christians saw the Sunday as a day of victory. They saw the Sunday as a day of feast. And that is why they do not fast. They feast on that day because that was the day that their savior is said to have resurrected and they, they are happy on that day. And so they decided that, okay, then we have to worship on that day because that is the day of resurrection. So it is a feast day for many Christians. I bet the Pentecostals have no idea of this because even though they are doing the, the coronavirus and they are supposed to be indoors, I've been monitoring online the number of churches. Anyway, and according to St. Augustine, Augustine is one of the, uh, uh, what they call, early church fathers who is very much respected. He says a Sunday also prefigure eternal rest. It prefigure it gives an idea of the rest that christians are going to have in christ now sunday was eventually declared a public holiday by emperor constantine in ad 321 constantine believed that he was victorious at the battle of Milan bridge because of the help of the christian god now it is said that constantine who was a pagan um emperor ruler of Rome, um, before he became the emperor, was ensued in a fight with the, the then emperor. But he said he had a dream or a revelation in which it was said that in this sign you conquer. And to him that was the sign of the Christian God. And so uh, he craved and he actually got the support of the Christians to help him in the battle. And uh, when he fought, he won the battle. And so he, he then included Christianity as part of the Roman pantheon of gods or as part of Roman religion. So from his time, Christianity did not become um, alien to the Romans. He made Christians a part of the belief systems among the Romans. And so uh, what he did was um, to then declare Sunday, the day that the Christians worship, as a day which is holy day so that people do not go out so for him it was a whole holy day but the christians made it a holy day holy day holy day so he made it a holy day so that all others do not work all others um will stay at home and then so that the christians can worship it was strategic so that um it will also counteract the uh, worship of Roman gods at the time. Yeah. So, therefore, the day that Christians cherish so much ought to be made a holy day, a holiday to enable them give appropriate worship to their God, hence that decree. 
viewed as the day of the Lord, its celebration was characterized by joy. So the Christians were very happy about that day and then they participated in various actions. Right, let's get on to the next feast day, which is the Ascension Day. The Ascension Day. The Ascension was commemorated following after Lucan or Johannes narrative 50 days. And so before time, um, the uh, you realize that especially now that there is Easter, the Christians believe we have celebrated Easter. The Christians believe that their God uh, is risen and he walked on the face of this earth for about 40 days, interacted with a lot of things and whatever, whatever, and then he ascended into heaven. Remember the Apostles' Creed? Yeah. So the Christians confess all of that. And then, um, <clears throat> according to, when we talk about Luke and or Johannes, we are talking about the Gospel of Luke or the Gospel of John. But then the Ascension Day, it is usually until the second half of the fourth century that the Ascension Day was commemorated as a historical event on the 40 days. And then on the 50th day is the uh, Pentecost. So on the 40 days after the resurrection, the uh, Christians believe that their Savior resurrected. And you can see a picture of it down there, sort of um, when he went on Mount Olives and two uh, angels came to uphold him and then it is said that those are uh, Elijah and Moses who said that the same Jesus who you see going up will come back again. So even at the ascension, one of the major elements is the apocalypse, the coming of Jesus the Christ. Do you remember that I have told you that in the exam, I will bring terminologies. Please don't play with these terminologies. And of course, in the eye, there will be some terminologies just to brace you up because I have been mentioned apocalypse, apocalypse. Don't be surprised if you see it in the exam. Apocalypse means the second coming. And then eschatology is signs of the second coming. You, you sit down and <laughs> make all kinds of comments. And then some of you, when you are following the lecture on YouTube, you are sleeping. Right. So the Ascension Day is believed to be 40 days after uh, the resurrection of Christ. So 40 days from now, you hear some of the churches, the Methodist, the Presby, the Anglican, the Catholic, they, they will hold mass, they will hold services in the evening. But <laughs> as for us, the Pentecost, as the idea, Christ, Christ, sorry, no, 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 so, but there was so, we put go, we have found, we have in the ascension, yeah. So, we have to go, we have to go, we have Anyway, so that is the Ascension Day. Now let's talk about Lent proper. It is a period of 40 days which was determined by the length of Jesus' fast in the wilderness. You remember that uh, Jesus is said to have fasted for 40 days in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4. Then you also have it in Luke chapter 4. Yeah, uh, In those passages, Jesus fasted and the devil tempted him. So the Christians also, when they are preparing for Easter, they also go through that 40 day Lent. Oh, <laughs> Anyway, the word Lent comes from Anglo-Saxon, which is la, uh, Lenten, which means spring, spring, when things are beginning to come up again. It's a combination of two elements, a feast of Pascal, or the past passion of Jesus Christ, and a period of preparation for baptism. Among the early church, the Lenten period was a period where they prepared baptismal candidates for baptism and so they use that 40 days to teach them a lot about um, the christian faith and all kinds of things now the actual length length of lent varies considerably depending on how the 40 days are calculated there are those who include the good friday as a day of fast and holy saturday and there are those who also include the holy week and there are those who say that Saturdays and Sundays should be included. There are those who say that Sunday alone should be excluded and all kinds of things. So it, it differs. So we are saying, for instance, Athanasius, one of the um, church fathers of the uh, church in... Uh, Athanasius was in Carthage. Oh, yeah, he was um, one of the church fathers in African region, in North Africa. 
alludes to a six week length period beginning on a Monday and including Holy Week. Ugaria, another um, church giant, a woman, yeah, has eight weeks because Saturdays and Sundays were not day of fast. And particularly for the Sunday, they are usually not included because it is a feast day. It is a day of joy. Uh -huh. And like you remember, Jesus said that in so long as the bridegroom is here, there is no reason for fasting. And so if it's the day that their, their Savior resurrected, then they must as well be feastful on that day. In today's Christianity, Lent begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday. So largely, this is what we experience these days from Ash Wednesday through to Holy Saturday, which actually means that the uh, crucifixion or the Good Friday is actually included in the fast. <laughs> but Good Friday service too. Some of us are churches, Charlie. Oh, they will do money and then they will go back again and do seven words on the cross. Hey, baku 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 seven. Hey, on the birth year now, yes, sir. The other cry again, oh, the Sunday within the period are not counted as fast days, yeah. So the Saturdays are rather included, but then the Sundays are not. Now, let's talk about Christmas and Epiphany. Yeah, when you mention Epiphany, there are some people who don't, but well, we have just mentioned Epiphany as um, appearing. Both Christmas and Epiphany are festivals instituted to counter pagan festivals connected with the uh, winter solstice, which in the East was reckoned to be 25th December and 6th January in the East in Alexandria. Now, you have a lot of people who suggest that Christians should not celebrate Christmas for various reasons. And one of the reasons that spring up usually is the effect that that day was a day of um, the worship of Bacchus, the worship of some uh, Roman gods. Yeah, um, certainly it is true. But like I mentioned, Constantine actually set up that date because that was the day when many uh, pagans were worshipping other gods and he wanted to counteract it. He wanted to introduce the Christian festival on those days so that it will cover it up. So it was instituted to counter pagan festivals. Pagan festivals. So the 25th, we got, we are, there is every reason to be sure that the 25th was not the day that Christ was born. But even for you as a uh, Human being, sometimes uh, your birthday falls on, let's say, a Tuesday, and you can decide to celebrate it on Saturday or Sunday on in a weekend. It doesn't make any difference. And so it's just a date, and it's just commemorative. commemorative. Something can happen. You can postpone an event for anything. So Christians feel that that is the day they want to use for all intents and purposes. Christ was not born on the 25th of December. Neither was he born on the 6th of January. No. But then Christians have come to agree on that date and they celebrate it. Sure. In the East, 6th January was connected with the virgin birth of uh, Aeon, Dionysius, and, and legions of Epiphanies in which gods made themselves known to men. So in the East, 6th January, which is seen as the day of Epiphany, was to replace the worship of other gods and so it was in epiphany is considered to be older than christmas yes epiphany um is said to be when the angels appeared and all of that so epiphany comes from the greek word epiphania which means manifestation it also signifies appearing appearing it is connected with uh, christ's baptism nativity and miracle at canaan so epiphany spans a period when Christ was born, when he was baptized, and then the miracle at Canaan, when he attended a wedding. Please don't ask me whose wedding. I beg you. I don't want any problem with your people. Please. I don't know whose wedding. The Bible did not say. At least the Bible said Jesus was invited. Hey, Hey, what a guest. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yo. Okay. So uh, that is epiphany. Now Christmas. The word Christmas is derived from a combination of two words. Christ and mass. Christ 
and mass. It is therefore the special mass or worship service set during the celebration of Christ's birth. It comes from the season's first service, the Christ Mass. And so that is uh, Christmas. So it is Christ Mass, the service to commemorate Christ and uh, what he represents for the Christians. Now, um, the color used on these occasions are white, gold, and materials that are fine in structure and express happiness. So sometimes people can use yellow. Ah, is there a difference between gold and yellow? What's that? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get people telling you uh, uh, what uh, red, then they say wine, and then they say all kinds of things. Now, I even hear there is something called turquoise blue. My mm. <laughs> So um, it's largely... Uh, on Christmas Day, you see people wearing white and gold and bright colors to show their joy. 25th had become fixed as the date for the observance of the birthday of the sun god in 274. So, like I mentioned, that was the day that they worshipped the sun god. It should be noted that it was not the pagan celebration which was christened. Let me, I think that point is worth repeating. It was not the pagan celebration which was Christian. They were as if the, what the, uh, the pagans were doing were brought into Christianity and made Christian. No, it was rather that the Christians introduced a new thing but just took on the date so that the pagans will not have the opportunity to have their elaborate worship as they do. Yeah, so that is the, the difference. The Christians took over the uh, pagan worship in order to make the impact they wanted. Now, Christmas, the celebration of Christ's birth replaced the pagan one, like I've said. Before this time, in the 4th century, there was no record to show that Jesus celebrated his birthday, nor his apostles or the early church celebrated it. No, there is no record before the 4th century that the celebration was done. But then in the 4th century, when Constantine became the emperor, that was when he instituted that so that it will counteract the, um, as I've mentioned, the um, pagan worship at the time. Now let's deal with Easter. Yeah, we just celebrated Easter so you can make a lot of meaning from that. So when Easter, so our summer. Easter, yeah, that's an Easter punchy. So, but I reduce it, they didn't so. I don't go for more the day. Oh, Debbie. Anyway, this is the oldest and greatest festival in Christianity, which falls on Sunday, the day Christ rose from the dead. And so, to the Christians, the biggest, the heaviest of all is Easter, because that is when they believe that Christ died for their sins. Christ died to redeem mankind. And so Christians put a lot of emphasis on Easter. According to Tertullian, one of the church fathers um, in Carthage, he says that Easter was the normal occasion for converts to be initiated into the Christian faith. And so you realize that in most churches during Easter, there is baptism of new uh, members like catechumen um, uh, who have gone through training. They are ushered into Christianity during Easter. So on Easter, Christians commemorate the death and resurrection of Christ and celebrate both baptism and the Eucharist. And so they also take part in the Holy Communion um, during Easter. And these days, hey, this year it was interesting. You know? Now you saw some churches you, beforehand, the Pentecostals have been serving communion online or on TV and others. And then the <laughs> other churches were uh, lambasting them now, you saw them also serving on TV so that their members will follow. Hey, I saw that of the Methodists and that of the Presbyterians, and I said, I'm groaning for <laughs> times have changed, we are not living in normal times. Well, Abeba, anyway. So, previously, preparations for Easter spanned over two days with prayer and fasting on Friday and Saturday, and so. The Christians did a lot. And in fact, if you read the literature, the Christians uh, on Easter day, they go for service at dawn, in the afternoon, in the evening, and all of a sort. Um, and it's so interesting. These days, people don't have time. It's crazy for 
How many times? <laughs> so they don't even worry themselves that much. And then we are saying that this was uh, lengthened to a week and then to 40 days, now called Lent in English. Other places organize vigils on the Friday and Saturday night. Yeah, like I mentioned, if you read texts like um, Didache or, or you read um, other Christian materials, you see some of these things that they spent a lot of time. Now, let's consider some of the activities that go on for the Easter period among the mainline churches. Yeah, let's begin with the mainline churches. Among the mainline churches, some of the activities will include the Ash Wednesday where they impose the um, ash on their foreheads, like I mentioned, and then they will begin the length, the 40 day fast. And then, particularly among the um, Catholics and uh, sometimes the Anglicans, there is what they have the Christian Mass, the Christian Mass. And this is where the bishop blesses three kinds of oils which uh, they use throughout the year. So, uh, so in the Catholic Church, three kinds of oil. So that is where the bishop fellowships with all the priests in the diocese. And then they get the oil. And this is usually on the Wednesday before the Passion Week or the Wednesday uh, before the uh, Monday, Thursday. So the bishop in a mass with all the priests, and these days, even yeah, 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 <laughs> and then um, before that the, there is a triumphant entry that's the palm sunday the sunday before the passion week is also celebrated and then uh, that was the sunday where it said that jesus sat on a donkey and then there is the passion week also so that that is when uh, the, the week uh, before jesus was crucified you find that and then again you have the Monday, Thursday, that is the Thursday before the Easter, the, 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 the Good Friday. That is when in that service, the Christians do two major things. This, they, remember, they commemorate Jesus' last supper. Last supper, not lost supper. But they commemorate Jesus' last meal with the disciples. Uh -huh. And then also the feet washing. So in uh, the mainline churches, they go to church and then Osofo will wash their feet. Osofo, father. So interesting. So the Christians do that on that day. And then there is a Good Friday, the Holy Saturday, and then the Resurrection Day. And then the Easter festivities are over. And then they begin to wait for the ascension day so these are some of the activities the mainline churches go through particularly with the catholics there is even more but uh, generally these are fine and on the other hand among the pentecostals during easter they don't worry themselves with this lengthy ash wednesday lent uh, palm sunday christmas passion week monday thursday good friday holy saturday no 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 <laughs> Wonderful. So uh, there are a lot of conventions around that time. So you can see the pictures. They gather a lot of people, a lot of people. And um, the picture to your right is from the Pentecost uh, Convention Center or Retreat Center at uh, Kaswa. Wow, I visited that place um, last Two years and I was shocked. <laughs> oh, when Kwan de Maya did. What? You look at the buildings and the capacity of the buildings. They were so putting it up. Oh, with the. Oh, my mom said, Mommy, teacher, mom. What? 
So when they go there, a lot of singing, and you can see the youth, a lot of singing, a lot of dancing, and people give their life to Christ at such conventions, and they enjoy a lot at such places. And so that also goes on among the Pentecostals. So guys, um, in all of this, Midasi, I mean Shram. So uh, take good care of yourselves. And um, again, let me take the pleasure to retreat the fact that you need to go on Sakai. Go on Sakai, answer the few questions available. I'm taking care of them. Yeah, I'm taking care of them. Last, The last one that I did, yeah, I think some of you had the issues because one thing I did was that if you got the answer correct, it was one mark. But if you get it wrong, I would deduct 1.5. Yeah. <laughs> so many ability. Hey, easy. And the answer is, you know, man, listen to the lecture. Learn from it. The way some of you, you are learning from lecture and you are sleeping here at the end. You see. So get yourself prepared. But um, come on, don't worry about that. This time around, I won't do it that way. So uh, don't worry. Try and answer the questions to the best of your abilities. Because that one, <laughs> but look, I'll take care of them. The, uh, the few that I've handled uh, already, I... I took off the what you call 1.5 from there so i had replaced with those ones so don't worry about it and then then um, get us up guys please take time to follow the um lecture subscribe subscribe comment and like it, it it's helpful please please do so and then also remember that the IE will come off on the 30th of April. Next week, I'll give you a lot more details about the IE so that you can prepare for it. Take good care of yourself. Guys, it's getting dangerous, so please stay at home as has been instructed um, and follow the protocols, washing of your hands, avoiding certain contacts, and take good care of yourself. Generally, cleanliness, you people say, is next to godliness. So come on, practice some cleanliness and let's enjoy life. Uh, like I said, let me say it again. If you think that staying at home is restraining, it is even more restraining when we have to put you in a coffin. So please, don't try that. Try and stay at home. Take time to study. Reflect on your life and make good decisions so that your life will become better. I'm very grateful for coming your way today. Next week, I'll be with you again and taking care of yourself. Bye.